Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, this week's been a crazy week in terms of uh, when I'm dropping shows and uh, when I'm giving you guys the content that I normally do. But, um, you know, things come up and then you got the holiday week and all this kind of stuff going on. And so um, I wasn't sure what my schedule is going to look like uh, later later today. Today is Wednesday, obviously, day before Thanksgiving. So I wanted to make sure that I got on here and um, gave you guys the content that you normally get from me, <clears throat> excuse me, on a Wednesday. So I said, all right, let me let me get in here early. Let me go ahead and uh, deliver this and uh, drop the show. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully we get some people in here in the chat. I know it's a, a very odd time, totally different from when I normally do it, but at least uh, for those who don't catch it live, you'll be able to see the replay, uh, you know, later today or if you want to watch it tomorrow or whenever that may be. So uh, at least I will have the opportunity to uh, to get this out to you guys. Again, don't know uh, what my schedule is going to look like later today, but I wanted to make sure that I got this content out to you. So we got some uh, we got some good stuff. I appreciate anybody who's uh, who's um, showing up here this morning. It's not that serious. What's good, bro? Haven't seen you in a while, man. Pleasure to see you back in the back in the chat. Um, but yeah, anyone who's uh, anyone who's uh, uh, checking in, I appreciate you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate that. Helps the show grow. Helps the YouTube algorithm push it out to uh, more people who uh, may want to listen and uh, make sure you hit that share button as well. Share button is powerful. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to drop my little spiel and then we'll go ahead and get going. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in. Talk to us. Get at me. I love it. I can't. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, let's get to the next topic. And the next topic, Michael Jordan, the GOAT, the widely recognized greatest player of all time. And if you know anything about basketball and you actually watch basketball, then you know who the GOAT really is. Anyway, um, so uh, I, I saw this yesterday. I thought it was interesting, and uh, it, it just came across my feed because you know your phone, like, even if you try to turn it off, your phone is always listening to what you say and always, you know, uh, keeping keeping tabs on what you look up and all that stuff because that's how it basically, um, you know, uh, uh, hits your news feed with stuff. So anyway, um, Michael Jordan, uh, the discussion was, well, first of all, let, let, we know we know how great uh, Michael Jordan was, right? We know that the dude was uh, special. Um, we know that he was one of the physically toughest, arguably the mentally toughest, him and Kobe, right? Kobe, Magic, Bird, Isaiah. I would probably put those guys at, at top five mentally toughest players ever. Maybe you get Dream and, and Kareem in there. But the point is, you know, easily one of the mentally toughest players of all time, one of the physically toughest, uh, arguably the most skilled, clearly the best two-way player of all time. Like there's too many superlatives that we can give uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, he could pass, he could rebound. We know he could score, right? Um, so all of these things, there really was no weakness to Michael Jordan's game. Now I know a lot of the younger fans are going to say, well, he couldn't shoot the three, but Michael Jordan was, you know, pretty much an average three-point era uh, shooter, excuse me, for the era that he played in. So we got to look at it that way instead of measuring it through today's lens of three point shooters. Right. He was, you know, he was, he was right there as an average three point shooter in his era percentage wise. So you got that. And then also, as we know, the game was played inside out back then, not outside in like it is now. So we, you know, we can't, again, we got to stop looking at things through today's lens. When we look at the past, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So anyway, uh, Michael Jordan the superlatives can go on without end. Right. Anyway, this is not about that, but I'll say, Part of the reason that he was who he was was his mentality. The guy was an absolute psychopath, whether it was with himself, whether it was with his teammates, whether it was with his uh, opposition. And all of that led to the incredible success he had and all of the things he was able to achieve 
on and off the court, right? Because he's a total freaking nut job, obsessed with winning and being the best in everything, right? And he would do, yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Nino. No, he was sick, like seriously. Um, I'm pretty sure I've told the, the story on this show before. Uh, David Robinson talks about it when those guys were with the Dream Team. So that's part of the reason that Mike um, loved to gamble so much, right? He had some obsession with competition. And Mike, his his obsession with competition was to the point of like cheating. So when they were on the Dream Team, I, I don't know if it was when they got to Spain or whatever, but Michael Jordan was trying to get David Robinson to bet on whose bags came out of the baggage carousel from under the plane first. And later on, people were finding out that, you know, Jordan was like paying the bag boys behind, you know, behind everybody's back, like to bring his bags out first. Like, So, yes, that is sick. Like there's something wrong with this dude. There's there's no reason for that. But the point is, like he had to have competition in everything at all costs, you know, whether it was golf or whether it was gambling or whether it was basketball, whatever it was. He's just obsessed with the feeling of competition and the all time greats. They're all like that again, whether it's and I always point to the same crop of guys. Whether it's your Kobe's, whether it's your Isaiah's, whether it's your, you know, Elijah Wands and, and, and Bird and Magic, like all those guys, the stories that you hear and the stuff that they tell you is all about winning the obsession with competition. So um, Mike was just wired very, very differently. Right. And I'll tell you, we saw it to some extent when he became an owner. He just wasn't any good at doing that, right? He wasn't good at dealing with it with personnel. He wasn't good at any of that. So, like, that was the thing. He wanted to win, and it was killing him that he wasn't winning, but he just didn't know how from an ownership perspective. So, anyway, um, I guess he was asked at some point, I don't know if it was recently or not, but I just saw the article, like, yesterday. He was asked about whether or not uh, he would make a good coach and what he thought about that. And while I don't have sound, I'll put the – uh I'll, uh, I'll put it up here. I'll put the quotes and then I'll read them to you. So he was asked about how he think he would do as a coach. So he says, quote, I have no patience for coaching, unquote. The Chicago Bulls icon said, quote, you know, my biggest problem from a competitive standpoint, you notice he always uses the words competitive. Anyway, from a competitive standpoint is the focus of today's athlete and the focus of when I saw the game and how I pursued the game. It changes and it's totally different. So for me to ask an individual to focus on the game the way I played the game, in some ways, it'll be unfair to that kid to have to do that. And if he didn't do it, no telling where my emotions would be, unquote. Quote, I don't think I would have the patience for it. So in essence, coaching is something I never really felt I could do from an emotional standpoint because I'm much different and I have a different perspective about things than what the kids do today, unquote, MJ said. So I like that a lot, right? That shows that at, at the very least, Michael Jordan understands who he is and why he was the way he was, right? He he gets it. And so I, I have a lot of uh, respect for that because, you know, you, you hear about why, uh, why the all-time greats often don't make great coaches. And part of that is because they can't understand why why the guys can't do what they could do, which is weird, right? Because when they were playing – they knew that other guys couldn't do what they could do. But as coaches, I guess their assumption is if you work hard enough, you can do it. But it doesn't matter how hard I work. I will never be able to do the things that Michael Jordan and so many others could do. Right. Even if I want to choose a small guard. Right. I'm six feet tall. So let's just say even when I was younger at my absolute best, no matter how hard I worked, I was never going to be able to do what Tim Hardaway or Isaiah Thomas or Allen Iverson could do. I just couldn't because there is a limit on the skill that I have. Right. Everybody in life has different things that they're blessed with, and there is a limit on certain things they can do. There's this whole business of if you work hard enough, you can achieve anything. Yeah, that's not true. It's just not true. People have different talents, and, and that is what it is, and there, there's nothing wrong with that. So anyway, Michael Jordan acknowledges that he wouldn't be able to do that, and it's funny because um, he he talks about that, and he's saying it like, the perspective and what these young cats today focus on. Right. And this is something I've talked about uh, many times on this show is like the focus now is building a brand, having a brand. Right. When Michael Jordan and these guys were playing, the focus was master your craft and it will build your brand for you. But now everything is you got to have a brand. You got to have this amount of social media followers and this amount of engagement. Right. So you might not even need to be good at what you're doing, but what advertisers and endorsers and so on, they'll see like, Oh, damn, the Format Podcast got a million subscribers. Uh, hey, we need a million subscribers, y'all. So whoever you know, man, share the pod. <laughs> anyway, though, but they might see the Format Podcast got a million subscribers. It might be a trash podcast, but for whatever reason, 
a lot of people are watching it. So guess what? The advertisers will jump on it, even though the product is not great, simply because it has those it has those number of eyes on it, right? Because it has a brand. And so where this is something that I really had to learn, you know, and I probably figured this out over like the last year or so, not just with this podcast, but in this life and generation period, it's something that I had to learn that at the end of the day, what happens is this. If um, if you build a brand and people see that, they'll jump on you and they'll think that what you're doing is great, even if it's not. So it's just it's just kind of crazy. Like um, Jake Paul, he has a brand. He's he's a you know super YouTuber. And now he's got this brand as a YouTuber turned boxer. But is he that great at either one? Like his videos? I was I, I wondered, like, what is the big deal? Like, what made this dude blow up? And so I went and checked and I'm like, what is this? But anyway, this, this is not about hating on Jake Paul. It's just like he built a brand and that allowed him to do something that theoretically he shouldn't have been able to do the way he's doing it. But so, you know, the focus that Jordan is talking about with these kids is building a brand or doing all the high flying stuff. When Jordan, when he played, he had to understand, like, you know, it's it's about fundamentals. It's about getting the game right. It's about doing the right things. Right. How many players do you know that if if they knew they had the incredible scoring ability that Jordan did, would stay three years in college today and allow a coach to coach them hard, make them really defend and make them, you know, grind away on all the fundamentals. How many, right? Even though Kobe didn't go to college, what did he do? He, he learned from all the greats. He was always asking them questions, always, uh, you know, trying to uh, figure out what made them great, asking for tutelage and working, working, working at the fundamentals, at the basics, and then building on those to get great. Most of the players that we see today that are quote unquote great, they're not great with the fundamentals. They haven't mastered all that. They want to jump straight to the fancy stuff. And the fancy stuff only comes if you have a strong foundation, right? You can't build a mansion on toothpicks, right? You can't because it'll collapse. You have to have a strong foundation. And I think Michael Jordan acknowledges this and understands it that he himself would not be able to deal with today's players and everything that comes with them because he's like yo where is your focus on becoming great where is your focus on team where is your focus on winning and a lot unfortunately of these players they don't have that why because to them winning is getting the quote-unquote bag to them winning is uh getting the uh advertisements to them winning is getting all the social media engagement and following and for michael jordan it wasn't it wasn't that now that said there was no social media when he was at his peak and all that right when he was playing but Still, the premise is there. His focus wasn't on getting the most commercials or all that because he knew that if I dominate on the floor, all that stuff is going to come anyway. And so there needs to be a shift in mentality among these modern players. But I guess if the sources of the money keeps providing the money the way they're providing it before these players have proven themselves, why are they going to focus on mastering their craft? They're just not built that way. Um, Steven Jackson had some commentary about Michael Jordan when he was playing with the Charlotte, uh, I guess it was the Bobcats at the time. I don't know if it was the Hornets or the Bobcats when he was there. I think it was the Bobcats. But let's hear what he had to say, then we'll come back and talk about it. And then we'll also juxtapose Michael Jordan's perspective with the perspective of some other um, all-time greats in basketball who have become coaches. Man, let me say what happened. So I was playing in Charlotte, right? Um, this is before, you know, the first year I got that we got to the playoffs for the first time. And it, so MJ loved me for that alone. Right. But when I first got there, it was kind of rocky. You know what I'm saying? I just got traded to <laughs> So we got our ass beat by somebody. And uh, he came in the locker room after the game just going off on us like we need to get our shit together, right? And I made some little comment or something like that. He ain't say nothing. So he came to practice the next day. Back on that shit. Mm. Yeah, y'all think y'all did something? I'm six. Oh, he started talking about all his accolades. Take my shoes off. Yeah, because, you know, he had gave me his, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't just talking to me. He was talking because everybody had his shoes off, but he yeah. had gave me a deal and all that. Yeah. This shit kind of directed to me and Jerry Wallace because yeah. we, we the leaders of the team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he going off. Going Mike off. told you to take his fucking shoes off. Damn down. near. You know what I'm saying? Look at all the all shit I done done. Y'all went to the, I'm just going off on his right to the point where he gets on the second team in practice. And we lose. You lying. You ain't losing 50 years. My Oh, Mike suited up. How old was Mike? Listen, listen, this was, nigga, this was in 2010. Mike suited up? Oh, he, whatever he had on, he came out there, got on, got on, uh, pushed against the guard, whoever Gerald Wallace was guarding, the three guard, kicked him out and got in that spot and played with the second team. My second team wasn't scrubs now. He just made, gave them niggas confidence through the roof. And he scored a couple points, you know what I'm saying? Back I, up to, on oh, he, he scored a couple points and to the point where he talked so much shit afterwards, he grabbed the ball and went dunk one on the way out. 
Yeah, the true story. One thing, one thing. Did was you like this old motherfucker nah, hey, just came I, in and did us dirty no, like I, this I, and I, 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 on the way out? Nah, I'm a real one. I, this is what I told myself. You can ask my partners when I got home. That's why he did go. So that that's the story of the type of mindset that um, Michael Jordan had, right? But the thing is, you can't do that every time as a coach, right? You can't always, uh, you know, suit up and go out there and outplay your team. At some point, that's going to destroy their confidence and berating them doesn't always work, right? So um, I've had training as a leader, right, in the military. So one thing you learn, there are there are general ways that you can lead, right? Generally, uh, like time-tested methods of leadership. However, you also got to realize that every person can't be led the same way. And I think that that would be uh, something that Mike would have difficulty um, acknowledging and understanding and he would have difficulty having success with like that's one of the things that we know about phil jackson phil jackson completely understood that and that's also what um greg greg popovich i think understood but greg popovich as a leader very very smart also a guy who is a military leader uh former air force officer air force academy grad but anyway what he understood was he utilized tim duncan and said hey let me rip you publicly in front of the team. And once we do that, everyone else is going to fall in line. Now, you have to have a certain kind of superstar to allow for that to happen that can kind of put their ego to the side for the betterment of the team. We also heard that about Tom Brady and uh, Bill Belichick um, for years. Brady Brady used to get ripped in practice and in film study by Belichick. And as such, everybody knew, well, damn, if this could happen to Brady or if this can happen to Timmy, then we got to get in line. But what that also does is that allows those guys who take accountability to then have um, subordinate, they will be subordinate to the coach, but then they will have subordinates on the team under them that they can kind of flow that leadership downwards. So all that helps. But I don't think that Mike was the type of personality to be able to deal with that and to understand that you have to deal with different people in different ways, right? He was the kind of my way or the highway, um, you know, iron grip, iron fisted, we have to uh, dominate. I'll take the lead. I will do everything that I want you to do, but you better do it, right? And so that, I don't think, works with most guys. All right, so um, before we finish up this topic, what I want to point to is Larry Bird, another all-time great player who uh, he was a head coach for three years with the Pacers, and he got them, I think, to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I think he got them once to the NBA Finals, right? So um, he had success coaching, which – a lot of times you don't see the all-time great players having success coaching Magic Johnson. He came back and he briefly coached maybe 15 or 20 games, something like that, before he quit because he's like, man, these, these cats, they're, they're not wired like me. They're not wired like us, you know, so I, I can't deal with this. Isaiah Thomas coached uh, a number of teams, wasn't elite, didn't win a championship as a coach, but he's another guy who was an all-time great player. But I think maybe the difference with him being a point guard and being the coach on the floor, so to speak, um, allowed him to be um, better understand being a head coach and and that kind of thing. So and then Jerry West, who was um, head coach of the Lakers for a few years when he was done playing before he moved into the front office. And he had a lot of difficulty because, you know, being a psycho competitor, but not being able to physically um, to physically have anything to do with uh, the wins or losses that that probably would really eat at you as a coach when you were a former player. So. Uh, just very interesting. And this this was uh, something I wanted to get on here and talk about. And it just shows, man, the mentality that makes Michael different. And, you know, the guys from that era different from the guys from today. And it just wouldn't work. So, yeah, we, we got all that. Um, I'm going to open up the phone lines real quick. I'll take one, maybe two calls uh, if we got it. Just kind of want to hear um, if anyone has any thoughts on uh, Michael Jordan and and his perspective on why he couldn't be a good coach today. 904-219-8264, 904-219-8264. While we're waiting for that, let's look at uh, one of these uh, chats. Uh, Kevin James says, 95% of former players that have become coaches were role players. The great stone I picked, yeah, for laziness, sloppiness, not striving for perfection. Absolutely. Like, for instance, we look at um, Pat Riley, right? Um, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, what, five-time, uh, yes, five-time champion as a head coach. And uh, I think he was a champion as a player with the Lakers as well. And then, um, I see, uh, multiple-time champion, what, three-time champion as an executive. So, yeah, no, Pat Riley, uh, all-time great. And this is a guy who was 
Uh, he was a player as well. But to that point, Kevin Jones, he was a role player. So totally get it. Steve Kerr, what's he got now? Nine championships, seven. He's got, what, five as a player and four as a coach. So he's got nine championships as well. So that's another guy, role player. So, no, nah, I, I totally get it. That That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, the, the all-time greats do have difficulty with, um, you know, dealing with players who are lazy, sloppy, and not striving for greatness. So, yep, totally get it. All right. Um, that was a good topic. I like that one. Uh, don't think I will begin any calls on that. So, again, I am going to move right along to the final topic of the day. Well, let's see. We got a comment on that. Um, Nino says, I don't think MJ could coach in any era. I don't think that's true. I think he could coach back in the day because players respected coaches back then. Players worked harder back then. Players understood fundamentals more back then. I think he could coach back then, just not now. The focus is so, so different. The mindset is different, and he couldn't wrap his head around it. For instance, right, um, not that I'm some great X's and O's guy, but me, I probably couldn't coach high schoolers today either. Like, hell nah. I I'm supposed to be a coach, and you're going to tell me some BS? You're not going to listen? You're not going to work hard? Mm -mm. Not going to be able to do it? Nope, not me. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it at all. So, um, Mike, he could, but um, I, I, I understand why he can't coach today, but I think he could coach back then. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take this call. Yeah. Bruce, what's going on, man? Good to see you. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Chilling, chilling. What you got? We still on the, uh, you on the Michael Jordan couldn't coach today topic? Yes. Okay. What you got, man? I I agree. He couldn't coach today. He he said it out of his own mouth. I'm with you because he would he because he, he wouldn't ask. He, like he said, he wouldn't be able to take the laziness in the game. That the uh, entitlement. That the game, today game is just a little bit too free for Mike. Mike, they're not <laughs> tough enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since the players are too sensitive, they're too worried about TikTok. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not. They're not obsessed. True. True for this only. I only. I can truly say there's only a handful of people in it players in the NBA that truly love the game. Yeah, I understand I, what I'm saying? No, I agree. I think that so many players in the NBA love what the game can do for them. They don't necessarily yes, love the game. Love the game. Mm -hmm. I could probably name in the future, we should talk about that one day. We ain't got to do it right now. The, the players that, how many players in the game, like, you name five, the, the top five players that truly really love the game today. Because there's not a lot of them. They're too worried about social media and their brand. Mm -hmm. they're not they're not in love with the game, right? You know what I mean? They're not they're not they don't have the love of the game like a Kobe or a Mike. Mm -hmm. I understand what I'm saying. The love, my uh, Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. When those I remember, um, I think they had uh, they, I think they had a special years ago. It was uh, the Dream Team at the, the practice. You see the see the, see the practice, the Dream yeah the yeah practice, the yeah, Dream Team, mm -hmm. and, and Magic was telling them, I think Molly don't tell them. Don't let Mike shit on him, Mike, man. Don't let, let him be like the love. He was leaning on Bartley about letting Mike do what he want to do to him mm -hmm. in the practice. It's yeah. a documentary. Yeah. Man, yeah. Like, you see the competitive spirit in that? It's, they ain't got that. They ain't got that. No, no. It's, it's just different, it's just, man. They're not built the same. Yeah. Mike would be very frustrated. It. Mike would be, <laughs> man, nah, it won't work. It's, the, it's, just, it's a three-point shoot contest. And Mike would have had that. No, not at and all. It, trust me, no, Mike will be more frustrated than anything on defense. That will that will drive them. That that will age Mike so fast that the competitive nature on the defense. Um, you see how he was on his teammates on um. I'm not going to get into all that on um the last dance and he was cussing them out of practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mike, I don't agree. Let me just say this about Mike Mattana. I don't agree with how he was about things and shit, but it worked. It was like a, it was like an evil. He just was a, his his way of motivation was it was, it was so stern, like an old Southern granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So players don't have that. Man. It might it was it won't work on Mike. It won't work. No doubt, no doubt. Well, I got to run, Bruce. Man, I appreciate the call, All right, man. man. Thank you, brother. All right, man. All right. Uh, yeah, good call from Bruce as always, and he's he's a hundred percent right about that. 